I'll take a caller. Jimmy in New York. Oh, Jimmy Malad. What's on your mind, Jimmy? Yes, uh, somebody put our last talk on YouTube. It was very interesting. So, why, why, when you and I talked about Marxism and Obama? Yeah, when we had the long talk. Somebody put it on YouTube. Jimmy from Brooklyn on the Mike Savage show. You know, Jimmy, I was thinking of creating a, um, a think tank, and I would hire you as a resident scholar. Oh, I'd love that. I'd work with you anytime, Doc. I'd be honest. Well, you could, you could write position papers. We could become as important as the Heritage Foundation in time. Well, Heritage Foundation has no competition. I think that's wrong because they missed this whole Marxist uh, situation. We're the in Heritage now. Foundation does very good work, but they're kind of like uh, conservative light. They're sort of decaffeinated conservatism. Right. Anyway, There's nothing wrong with decaffeinated conservatism, but I actually like, I would like some caffeinated conservative think tank. Jimmy, would you work for the, for the group? Oh, definitely I'd work with you any time. Well, what would you do, stay in Brooklyn, though? You don't want to move to San Francisco, do you? Uh, Lenin, Cisco. No, I need to stay in New York for various uh, reasons. There's a lot happening here I can't miss, plus family and my other work and whatever. But All I'm right. No, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't give you the job yet. No, don't worry. The tickets haven't been sent. So what are you calling about today? Well, today, Earth Day, is Lenin's birthday. So how Lenin, You mean not John Lenin. You, you don't mean John Lenin. You mean Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, correct? Right. Vlad, right. The Soviet Lenin. That's what uh, Earth Day is about. It's another excuse to push us toward world government. So you have the one movement, the army tanks. Right. Why did the Earth Day founders, who are all left-wing, all communists, by the way, why did they pick this day, April 20, whatever it is? What is today's date? April, April 22nd. Because today is Lenin's birthday. You think they, that it's coincidental or they did it on purpose? I don't think it's coincidental at all. Uh, so why don't you do it? Wait, you're an expert on Soviet communism, Jimmy. Do you know anything about Hitler's Nazism and how it was connected to the Green Movement of its time? How, in fact, came to power in part on promising a return to the Earth? Well, he promised a lot of things. I'm not sure about the environmental part as much, but sort of the pagan Earth type thing. He, he, Hitler was all well, about remember that. that the Hitler Youth was sort of the Boy Scouts of his time, even though I'm a former Boy Scout, which was certainly the greatest organization I ever belonged to. The German Hitler Youth was much different than the American Boy Scouts in that it was a militaristic organization. But the fact is, is that he promised the, with the Lederhosen and the boys and the locker rooms and the towels. This was long before Rahm Emanuel. I mean, they were already, you know, yodeling already in the back room with each other with the blonde hair with the blue eye. So this is way before the scandal in the churches. They were already doing it, even though they were Nazis. I guarantee you the boys were being abused. Well, they took showers together. One of their advertisements to join the Nazis was showing them washing each other's back in a shower. And there's no way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that must have worked. how that work out? <laughs> uh, but the point is, is that he promised to, uh, to end, end the industrialization of Germany, which was polluting the, the fatherland. I don't think many people know that. He was a vehement greenie, Adolf. Adolf was a greenie. He was also a vegetarian. He was a vegetarian, right, and he also didn't drink alcohol. Did you know that? No, he was I a didn't. teetotaler, a vegetarian, and a, and a back-to-earth movement kind of guy. And he created the, the most despicable, racist monster machine the Earth had ever seen since Genghis Khan. He provided government jobs, health care, and housing. So that's, that's a way to get the population. You know, it's interesting you should say that I've actually studied, I have an entire library of books on the Third Reich, and what amazed me is that he came to power largely on jobs and on hope and change. Did you know that? Yes, yes. Hope, change, and jobs. People didn't join the Nazi party so much because they were racist. They joined for a job. The country was bankrupt, and he gave them a government, government job along the lines of uh, you-know-who. They also feared the communist movement that just murdered 10 million people in Ukraine, 32 to 33. So he exploited that fear and gave them basically uh, the same kind of movement, only led by Germany as opposed to led by the Soviets. So it well, shows Jimmy, you... Jimmy, my friend, if I do create the Savage Policy Center, you'll hear about it first in the Savage Nation, and you'll be getting a set of air tickets on, uh, on, your, on your birthday, which will not be Lenin's birthday. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> hey, if I can make Jimmy from Brooklyn laugh... This is actually a seminal day for me, Jimmy. I got a laugh out of you. How is that? Why do you feel light today? What is it, a spring day in New York? Well, my birthday is May 2nd. I missed by one day. May Day, May 1st. Oh. How do you, how do you an anti-communist, celebrate your birthday? 
Uh, just with family and friends. No, you no don't burn there. pictures of Khrushchev or anything like that. No, no, I, I'm blessed with some very good anti-communist friends from Cuba, China, Vietnam, Ukraine. We have a good little... You're a lucky man. How do you meet each other? How do you meet all those people? Well, I've been active in this like 45 years since I was a little... No, but I'm saying, but like, do you have meetings, like anti-bun meetings? I mean, like, how do you meet each other? Well, a April 30th is Vietnamese Memorial Day, you know, and uh, so I meet people by being active. Well, uh, they suffer terribly under the communists, the friends of Jane Fonda. And half the administration. You, no, how many Vietnamese were killed by Jane Fonda's friends after the U.S. troops were driven out by Walter Cronkite and the U.S. press? Oh, I don't have a number, but they never... One million were killed. I have a friend who was a paratrooper in, um, in, the, in the Vietnam era. And when they landed in Hue, you know, the, the flower city, the ancient city of Hue? Mm -hmm. they, went in, they went in to help uh, re retake the city from the communists who had taken it over. And he told me that he's haunted to this day by the memories of when they were trudging through the soil of the city. One of his friends stepped on what he thought was a tree root. You know, they were they were hunkered down and marching into the city to fight in, 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 a, in a battle. And he said he looked down and it wasn't a tree root, it was a hand. And when they started to dig in the trench, it was a mass grave. Uh, the friends of Jane Fonda and half the administration had killed all of the intellectuals, meaning the doctors, the lawyers, the civil servants... The police chiefs, anybody with eyeglasses was killed by the communist Chinese when they took over the city of Wei. Does that ring uh, true to you, uh, Jimmy? Uh, pretty much. I, I know that Wei, most of those people were on lists. Their names were already taken in order to be murdered. So it wasn't just where they went and they just mass killed. People were specifically taken and killed. Communists take names. They have names of people to be killed when the time is right. And Do I you believe think that the Obama administration is keeping lists of names for the time when the time comes to give them blessings and flowers? Well, it may not be him, but some, uh, some of his supporters may be doing You and I would probably be on that list right at the, near the top, if not the top. Yeah, I would think so, and I would think that um, they'll have a nice uh, a platinum microphone waiting for me in the internment camp. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jimmy, the thing is to keep laughing in their faces because I hate their guts. Jimmy, there's nothing I hate more than thugs and murderers and I hate people who hide behind politics when they're really just mass murderers. Have a nice day. I'll be right back. Sally.